the name of the law. We bring you another of the thrilling stories in this exciting series, taken from actual police case files. Our story begins behind Portsmouth's grim wall of steel and stone. It is September. Ready, Sullivan? Sure, I'm all set, Red. I'd sooner die trying to make this break than rot in here for 12 years. How do you think I feel and stir on a 25-year rap? All right, Wyoming. I got this job out in the courtyard so we can make the break. Now listen, here's what we have to do. Look out, here comes a screw. That's Joe the rat. Hi, Joe, old pal. Hi, Red. Going to sing for us at Warden Tucker's shindig tonight? Can't have a prison party without you. Why, sure, you know me, Joe. I always help out the boys. I'm going to sing Mother McCree and California, Here I Come. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. California, Here I Come. Maybe in 25 years you'll make Californian red uh, with five off for good behavior. California, here I come. That's rich. <laughs> Funny, eh? I'll show him, including Warden Tucker. He don't think I'm on the level, and I'm going to prove he's right. Sullivan. Yeah. Wyoming. Yes, Red. Here's what we do. Wyoming, we're only about 50 feet from those stables. Now, when we break, you set fire to that straw, get it? Sure. Here's the big Roman candle matches. Good. Doris smuggled them into me last visitor's day. Some girl, Doris. Yeah. When I get out, I'll get the dough to bring Doris back to California. Now listen, Wyoming. With that smoke to cover us up, and the fire giving them plenty to worry about, we break for the wall, right? Sure. Sullivan, when we get to the wall, I'll throw the ladder against it. You hook the rope we're hiding there onto the ladder and toss the rope over the wall, understand? Yes, Red. All right. And remember, if we get separated, write Doris's mother where you are. She'll pass the news on to me. Right. I'll get you. I'll keep working. I'll give the office any minute now. Now, come on! Fire! Fire in the stable! Come on, Sullivan! Over the wall! Come on, over! I'm over! Come on, Red! Right! Right! They're going over the wall! Get away, you! I'll put this pitchfork through you! Canada and all states along the American border. Red Ryan, merciless bank bandit, just escaped from Portsmouth Penitentiary. At large with him are Arthur Sullivan, desperate gunman, and two other criminals, Gordon Simpson and Thomas Bryan. Wyoming McMullen, who made the break with Ryan, was wounded and captured. These escaped convicts will want money and guns immediately. As bank holdups are there specially, all banks are warned to put on extra guards and to report any information to Warden Robert Tucker at Portsmouth. Remember, Ryan is redheaded. Warden Tucker, I'm glad you were able to come to Ottawa in this case. And I'd go farther than from Portsmouth to Ottawa to capture Red Ryan, Inspector Duncan. Well, Warden, the entire criminal investigation department here is at your disposal. And I personally am going to devote all my time to the capture of Red Ryan. Thank you, Inspector. I need all the help I can get from you and from the American police, too. You can depend on the American authorities. Sit down, Warden. Thanks. Now, tell me all about the man. Well, Inspector, he's the most dangerous and the most misleading criminal in Canada. Hmm? Misleading? Yes. Ryan has the most attractive personality you ever met. He can sing like an angel. He makes people like him. Worst of all... He makes them trust him. Then he betrays that trust. But he didn't fool me. Mm. How long was he in Portsmouth Penitentiary? He's been there three times. Always gets out for good behavior. 
Came to Portsmouth first on a three-year stretch for burglary and attempting to kill an officer. Was his sentence reduced? Yes, for good behavior. Oh, he's a model convict. Three months after he was out, he was back. The 12-year term for robbery. This was in uh, 1915. You don't mean to say he was let out again. That's just what I mean to say. For good behavior. His term was reduced and he went overseas. The Canadian Army. Some say he deserted and joined the Foreign Legion. What happened then? Well, in 1921, he was sent to St. Vincent de Paul Prison, then transferred to Portsmouth, where I came in contact with him. He was an ideal prisoner. Even hard-boiled guards swore by him and trusted him. Has he friends outside? Powerful friends outside. The best people. They always hope for his reform, and he always fools them. But he didn't fool me much. His good conduct, however, did get him out in the yard from where it was possible to make the break. Hmm. Which he did. Well, I'll get Ryan if I have to chase him all over Canada. Uh, How about women friends? Has he many? Well, there's one girl he likes, Doris. She lives in Toronto. Uh, She visited Ryan and wrote him every week. We're having her house shadowed. Mm -hmm. Have you the file of all his prison letters and the record of all his visitors? Yes, Inspector. I brought them with me. Here they are. Mm. Well, this fellow McMullen was captured. We don't have to worry about Simpson and Brian much. No, they're petty criminals. But uh, Ryan and Sullivan now... Uh, Think they'll stick together? Unquestionably. They look enough alike to be brothers. Both are tall and slender. Ryan's hair is flaming red. You know Sullivan's blonde. They've been friends since their school days. Mm. Looks bad. How are they with guns? Deadly. And when we find them, you may be sure they'll be posing as brothers. Pardon, Inspector. What is it, Sergeant? Inspector, Mr. Leroy Oak, manager of the Bank of Nova Scotia, Toronto, uh, just phoned. What's the matter up there? We had a bank robbery. Two men held up. A redhead and blonde, Sergeant? What? Why, yes, Warden, but uh, how did... How much cash was taken? Over $3,000. That's bad. All right, Sergeant. Flash Old Dominion and City Police to be on the lookout for Red Ryan and Arthur Sullivan. Yes, Inspector. It's Ryan and Sullivan, all right, Inspector. Unquestionably. We'll have to re- redouble our efforts now. I'll get in touch with the American police right away. We'll need them. Ryan and Sullivan have money and guns now. That means they are more dangerous than ever. you, Red? Oh, Red, darling. Doris. Oh, I've waited years for this. You got my letter all right? Oh, yes, Red. Mama gave it to me. But you're driving without any light. Oh, Red, you'll get killed someday. <laughs> Not in an automobile accident, sweetheart. Why are you trembling so? Red, you don't know what it means to me. How long can I hold you like this? We've got five minutes. This red head of mine will draw Shh. cops like... When will I see you again? When I get set, I'll wire for you. Here's $300. I'll send you plenty more. Oh, but, Red, you said you were going straight, and you didn't. You robbed the Bank of Nova Scotia right here in Toronto this afternoon. I had to have money. But I swear on my mother's memory, this is the last job I'll ever pull. I'll go straight, get a job, buy a little home for you in California. We'll go away, together. Away, together. From jails and policemen and bank robberies and shame. Promise. Swear. I swear. On my love for you, I'll never rob another bank. (laughs) Does that satisfy you? Oh, yes, Red. Oh, you're wonderful. You can get any job. People like you. You don't have to steal. You can work. I know you mean to be good. But there are two men inside of you. One good, one horrid. Yes. And both crazy about you. I'll wire you when and where. Will you be ready? I'll always be ready. And remember your promise. A red-headed guy is like an elephant. He never forgets. Oh, Fred. There you are, Mr. Green. $4,506. Quite a payroll you have these days. Yep, keeps me hustling. But I'm satisfied if I can meet the payroll and overhead and have a few dollars left for me and the kids. Well, Mr. Green, you'd make the bank feel better if you had a bodyguard whenever you carry your payroll. 
We've had some bad hold-ups in Detroit lately. Oh, I've I been... forgot to tell you. I've got a bodyguard. Young fellow's been uh, working for me for a week or so. A week? Who is he? Oh, don't worry. I know an honest face when I see one. His name is Wheeler. Uh, there he is by the door. Oh, Wheeler. Yes, sir. Ready, Mr. Green? Uh, yes, I just wanted the teller to get a good look at my new bodyguard. How are you, Mr. Wheeler? Call him Red. Oh. How are you, Red? Fine, thanks. Uh, well, so long. Come on, Red. Right with you, Mr. Green. Hand over that payroll, you. Get him, Red, quick. Help, he's robbing me. You heard him hand it over. Uh, but, Red, what are you... Hand over that money. Let go of that money or I'll... Help, you. please, help. Let him have it, Sullivan. Sure. Help, please. Good, he won't need it anyway. He's going to be pushing up daisies. <laughs> so you two gentlemen are settling here in Buffalo? Yes, my brother here and I are going into the automobile business. So the first place we come to is a bank. Yeah, we'd like to open an account. Good luck. Mighty glad to have you, gentlemen. Uh, what's the name, please? Miller. Edward and Charles Miller. Now, which is which? You look like twins, except that you have red hair and your brother blonde hair. Stick them up. Why, guns. Oh, what? Don't oh, you fool or I'll blow your brains Keep out. Keep them covered. I'll attend to the others outside. Okay. Along the wall, there. Along the wall. Come on, now. Okay, I'm coming. Hey, stay down there, you. Oh, Ryan's in the money, all right, Warden. $4,500 from the payroll holdup in Detroit and... 6000 from the bank in Buffalo. And this is the man who convinces everyone he's going straight. Any reports from your undercover man, Inspector? Not yet, Warden. I had a special operator covering the mail that Doris gets. Doris should be hearing from Ryan soon. He's in the money. $10,500 to support. Message for you, Inspector. Thanks, Sergeant. Hmm. Operator 3. Finally saw a certain letter. Here's a copy. Doris, sweetheart. We got a car, the fastest on the road. Can pass anybody. Going west. Riders, Minneapolis, general delivery. We're under the names of Ed and Charlie Miller, brothers. We should be there the week of December 18th. We'll pull a good job there and make for Los Angeles. I'll send for you to be married. Then no more holdups ever again. I promise to go straight. Minneapolis? December 18th. That gives us just four days to get there. And set the trap. General delivery, eh? Maybe we can hand them a surprise Christmas present. Yes, Chief Brunchill. We'll have to rely entirely on you and your Minneapolis police. Uh, sure, Warden Tucker, but won't you and Inspector Duncan be in on it? Yes, undercover, but not in the open. Red Ryan knows both the inspector here and me. One glimpse of us in Minneapolis, and it would be all off. That's right, Gunter. Well, we can't take a chance. How many men can you spare us to get Ryan and Sullivan? Inspector, I've called in my entire staff of detectives and patrolmen. And the best man I've got, Bill Meehan. He's absolutely fearless. Can he shoot? Why, he's a dead shot. I plan to have him in the post office near the general delivery window. If anybody asks for mail for Ed or Charlie Miller, Meehan will be right there. I wish we could be right there, too. Chief? Since Tucker and I can't appear outside, how about putting us inside the post office, too? We've chased this man thousands of miles, and we intend to get him dead or alive. All right. We'll all be inside. Fine. Good. Now, everything's arranged with the post office authorities. If either man comes to the window for mail for Miller Brothers, the clerk at the window will step on a buzzer like this one. Uh -huh. And that'll tip us off. Well, what about outside? Well, outside the post office, I'll have detectives and policemen. 
This may be a bloody business since it's Christmas time and the post office will be crowded with women and children. And Ryan wouldn't hesitate to shoot his way out of them. We can't afford to give him a chance. Nothing for Butterfield. Let. Mother, I want to go back to the store and see Santa Claus again, Mother. Now be quiet, Milton. Uh, have you any mail for Mrs. Brink-Larkin? Mother! Uh, here you are, Mrs. Larkin. Next. Oh, a letter from Daddy. Let's go over here and read Mother, it. Mother, I want to see Santa Claus. Well, men, anything yet? Oh, I've been hanging around this general delivery window so long I can't think. Six solid days, Chief. Uh, think Ryan will show up? Oh, I don't know. Letter still here waiting for Charlie Miller. Well, it's pretty near closing time. I'll be inside with a walk with the inspector. All right, Chief. Listen for the buzzer. Hello, Judy. Hello. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Come away, Millicent. Don't talk to strange men. Any mail for James Dixon? There you are. Next. Any mail for Charlie or Ed Miller? What? What name? Ed or Charlie Miller. We're brothers. Uh, I'll see. I was sure I saw a letter here for Charlie Miller. Oh, okay. I'd change my brand if my hand shook like yours. I... Say, what oh, is this? Come away right from that window Let there. Let go of my arm. Let go! There's a gun up his sleeve. Get those hands up, Ryan. Come on, shoot it out. All right, you ask for it. Oh, hey, come on, Bill. I've got his gun. Good work, man. You're shooting into a bunch of women and children, I right? can't move my arm up. Paralyzed. Oh. Oh, hello, Wooden. We meet again, eh? Yes. You're lucky to be alive, Ryan. Where's Sullivan? I don't know. Take me to a hospital. Bring him outside of the wagon, Bill. All right, Chief. Come on, Ryan. Right, now stand back, everybody. Stand Come back on. there. I want just one shot of that gunfighter over there. I've got Ryan. Go ahead. Go on. Take good aim. Oh. You've got him, man. Sullivan. Oh. Sullivan. Hey, hey, you can't pull him back now, Ryan. Come on. Come on, Ryan. Send for me, Warden? Yes, Ryan. I've got some news for you. <laughs> Want me to sing an extra solo in the choir? No. Your choir singing never fooled me much, Ryan. Oh, gee, you got me all wrong, Warden. I'm through. I may have to spend the rest of my days here, but I'm a changed man. I will see. I've watched you now for six years, Ryan. Ever since we brought you back from Minneapolis that Christmas. Ah, poor Sullivan. Well, maybe he was lucky. I got life. Crime doesn't pay after all, I guess. Well, my news is I'm leaving Portsmouth Prison. Oh, gee, Warden, I'm sorry to see you go. We'll meet again, Ryan, somewhere. I'm going to be warden at uh, Prince Albert Penitentiary. <laughs> Need a good tenor in your choir over there, Warden? When I leave here, Ryan, you may sing your way out of prison. But if I had my way, you'd never get a parole. <laughs> Nelson. 
just out on parole two days, and I've got two jobs. Gentlemen, you'll never regret giving the new Red Ryan this chance. God bless you. Oh, Red, I always knew you'd make good. Is a surprise. <laughs> I thought it would be, Inspector. Oh, hello, Warden. Hello, Ryan. We meet again. Inspector Duncan and I were just uh, talking about that holdup and murder at the gas station this morning. Gentlemen, I came to see if I could help you. In what, Ryan? These holdups and murders and bank robberies that have been going on. It's been a regular epidemic of them lately. Six in four weeks. Tough cases, too. Sure. Looks like a well organized gang working. I ought to know. I had a mob like that myself once. Have you heard anything, Ryan? No, Inspector. The bad boys know I've been going straight for over a year. Making $500 a month now on my two jobs. No need to hold up banks on that salary. <laughs> right. But these bank jobs look bad. I came in to see if I can help. And I'm glad you're here, Warden, to hear my idea. Uh, so am I. What is it? If I say the word, I can find out things. If any bank jobs are going to be pulled and when, I can tip you off and you can get Ryan. your men... You know, one bank teller thought he recognized your old friend, Wyoming McMullen. Would you squeal on another pal out on parole? Well, that don't sound like Red Ryan, I admit. But I figure I owe a debt to decent people. And maybe this way I can pay it off. Ryan, you're starting right now. <laughs> you could fool us by dyeing your hair. <laughs> well, Ryan, what have you to say? Not much, Warden. We meet again, like you said, I guess. I'm cashing in my chips this time. How did you trace me here? That last car you stole, remember? The morning you killed that gas station attendant and then came to the inspector's office to help us. I guess I never fooled you much, did I, Warden? You only fooled yourself, Ryan. That garage of yours was a pretty good front for tricking up cars and license plates. But why? You were making good money? Why couldn't you stay honest? Why did you have to pull all those bank jobs lately and this liquor store hold up? I, I had to do it. Something inside here. What happened to to Wyoming? McMullen was cornered in a bus, and he killed himself trying to shoot a policeman over his shoulder. Shot himself right through the neck. Uh, hot lead. That's, that's all we got to show for it. Hot lead. Oh. Oh. Is he dead, Warden? Yes. He's dead, Sergeant. 
That's the end of Red Ryan. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde Ryan. He's up for his last parole. Justice triumph in the name of the law.